This uh, will be an Ash Wednesday service and I'll be explaining it in a moment, but I want to give you an image to uh, get you thinking about what it means. And it's coming up any minute now. You probably know this as uh, Rodin, the Impressionist, uh, the French Impressionist uh, sculptor's uh, statue called The Thinker. Um, I don't know if I was aware of it until I saw Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and uh, Ferris Bueller and his friend Cameron and girlfriend were in the Chicago Museum, and there, there, there was Rodin, his statue of The Thinker. And of course, they were thinking about things very different than what The Thinker was thinking about, because uh, I just learned recently, and it was uh, really stunning to me, that this, uh, this statue is a study uh, for a piece he was to put atop a much larger sculpture called The Gates of Hell. So you look at that statue and you think, well, what's he thinking about? Uh, where did I leave my clothes last night? Or, you know, what's life got out ahead for me? Or what, you know, but, but for Rodin, and I don't know much about his own faith or his beliefs, but, but for him it was, here's a man pondering uh, eternity. And again, I don't know if the sculptor was thinking heaven or hell. It was just, it was hell here. And he's thinking, what is my life about? Well, we can take it off the screen. We'll look at it in a moment again. Now, Lent is a season observed by uh, Christians uh, worldwide, and they have for centuries. Uh, it comes from a word which means literally spring. And uh, since Easter takes place in spring, Lent was to be preparation, uh, 40 days before Easter, before Holy Week. And, uh, and it, it's not stretching it too far to say that in, in a sense, and again, I'm going to stretch the metaphor a bit here, uh, but not too much, that Lent is spring training uh, for us. Uh, if you're a baseball fan, uh, you know that no matter how good a player might have been the last season, uh, no matter how much they may know, uh, during spring training, during the Lent of the baseball season, uh, they go back to basics. And they work on all the ABCs again. They get established in the things that uh, make for being uh, good baseball players. And in a sense, again, this is a metaphor, uh, in a sense, spring training, Lent, uh, is preparation for the season, the season of the cross and the resurrection, the ascension of Christ to the right hand of the throne of God, to the, the, the life of the church in the world. And Christians have seen the fit uh, in many traditions and for a long time. And if you're not a part of that, you may want to try it for the first time today or simply just observe. But uh, to begin Lent uh, with Ash Wednesday. And uh, it's a service in which uh, Christians will come to whoever is affixing the ashes and hear these words spoken to them or something like these words. Not, ex not always exactly these, these words, but uh, you, from dust you came. And to dust you shall return. And then they will make the sign of the cross on your forehead. Uh, a fitting way to start uh, a season of getting back to the basics. And the ashes on the forehead, in the sign of a cross, uh, speak of two death sentences. Uh, first of all, your own. Uh, I, the sentence God gave to our father Adam, uh, to, to all of us who have fallen short of the glory of God, and that's all of us. Uh, from dust you came, to dust you shall return. Uh, death, the wages of sin are death. And we, we see the wages of sin uh, enacted daily, if, unless we're living uh, in a college where... We're not next to homes where people are dying. But this is, uh, this is just the human condition. And there's a, there's a very healthy and um, salutary sobriety that's introduced into your mind when someone says to you, what's, what we know is true of all of us, uh, as they put ashes on your forehead and saying, you know, you came from dust. And to dust you shall return. Uh, Moses. In the 90th Psalm, he said, who knows, who knows the power of your wrath, O God? 
uh, your anger. For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Uh, teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And really, you know, the great question of life is really a question of death. Uh, where am I going? I have in my study or my office here, I'd love to show it to you sometime, it's a, it's a rather almost psychedelic uh, rendering of Hen Hieronymus Bosch, you know, the medieval painter, on the four last things. And they are death, judgment, heaven, or hell. And it was meant to be kind of a, a table top, <laughs> some table top, you want to put your glass of whatever on it, but, but in the middle is an eye, and next to it is the uh, crucified Christ, uh, our judge, who is observing us. And so, a death sentence here, and if you choose to come up this morning and begin the season of Lent with that statement, from dust you came to dust you shall return, uh, you're just being reminded of something that's true, uh, but it's profoundly true. And for many Christians, Lent then is a season of, uh, well, maybe fasting, uh, you know, voluntary self-denial of uh, pleasures, not because the pleasures are bad, but because the pleasures can often become idolatrous. And we can choose to stop doing something uh, that uh, we really like to do, not because it's evil, but because we, uh, we just get attached to things other than God, things that would, uh, that would cloud our vision about our destiny as human beings. But I said the ashes speak of two death sentences. Uh, the second is Christ's death sentence. You know, if we just wanted to kind of grind our faces in the dust, we could just smudge a bunch of ashes on our forehead and say, you're going to die. But we put those ashes in the sign of the cross because Christ bore the blame that we deserve. Uh, he became fully human. Uh, why did he do this? Well, he became a human that we might become like him, uh, the true Adam. Uh, but much more, he took what belonged to us, our sin and blame, and he said, I will take that upon me. He is the perfect penitent. Uh, he didn't need to repent, uh, but he did on our behalf. We who needed to repent can't because we need something to come into us, the Spirit of God. And so by the cross, we are forgiven. Uh, we are made whole. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. As Paul put it to the Romans, for if by the trespass of the one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more for well, those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. So, if you choose this morning, uh, you may come to several stations here and begin a season of preparation for a renewed appreciation and celebration uh, encounter with Christ's cross, Christ's resurrection, Christ's life given to us. Uh, if you choose not to, uh, we invite you just to sit and think about these things. You know, this, these kinds of activities are they're visible signs of invisible realities, and uh, you don't have to have the visible reality to participate in it. But uh, we just ask that you be silent and thoughtful. Let's put that image back up on the uh, screen here. That you think and you ponder uh, where your life's headed, uh, what really matters to you, and uh, to ask God to give you renewed grace to understand and to receive his pardon, and to uh, be weaned, uh, as I must, with you from our idols, the things that keep us away from him. So if you come and have the ashes affixed, if you sit and watch either way, it's time to ponder uh, things like eternity. Uh, life, death, the judgment, heaven, hell, uh, the meaning of life. Well, those who have uh, 
agreed to affix the ashes, just take your positions, uh, your places down here in the, uh, in the gym, our sanctuary. And there'll be music played while uh, they're affixing ashes. Uh, there's no need to rush up here. We have time to do this. Uh, but if you uh, are so led, please come up quietly, go back quietly. And again, I emphasize, just sit still and think about the mysteries of our faith. Father in heaven, uh, show us how to live by showing us that we will die. And therefore, how to die in our living and be raised with your son. Lord, we need help here. We need help. Give us your spirit. Teach us your ways. In Jesus' name, amen.